start again. Kyle Roof, welcome to the Insta VIP podcast. Kyle is co-founder and SEO lead at High Voltage SEO, co-creator of Page Optimizer Pro, and co-founder of Internet Marketing Gold. Kyle, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Glad you're here. So Kyle, could you take a few minutes and talk about who you are, what you do, and uh, don't be shy about your credentials? Sure thing. Uh, so as, as you said, I, I co-founded High Voltage SEO. We're a, uh, an SEO agency with um, an office in Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I am currently. We have an office in Berlin. We have an office in Melbourne. Uh, we have about 16 employees. We have about 80 clients. We do local SEO to national to international to e-com, to just about everything in between. Um, I am the co-creator of Page Optimizer Pro, which is an on-page evaluation tool. Um, the basic concept is you put your page in and your competitors, and the tool tells you uh, what Google likes. And then um, recently co-founded Internet Marketing Gold. That's a, an online community um, with a kind of a data-driven focus. In the last three years, I've conducted over 350 uh, scientific tests on Google's algorithm. Most of them are single variable tests, and my tests are now being published in, uh, in IMG, in Internet Marketing Gold. Very interesting. Well, um, and talk a little bit about um, you know, some of your credentials, Kyle, like uh, speaking engagements. Sure, so um, uh, I just finished uh, kind of the fall tour for me. For me. Uh, I spoke at a conference in Bali, uh, one in Thailand, and then uh, finished up in Milan, which was a lot of fun. It was a five week trip, which was a lot of travel. <laughs> that is wow <laughs> actually it was pretty crazy too so i live in phoenix i had to fly to la and the first flight then goes uh across the pacific to um to bali but then on the way back going through europe uh then went across the atlantic so i actually went around the world which wow. I'd, I'd never done before and it occurred to me i was like wait i think i'm actually going around the world on this and uh that's, that's what happened a, it was actually pretty crazy that's amazing what a, what a, what a, a trip of a lifetime yeah i think um uh, on, on this uh, on this trip, or what I was talking about, was um, some follow up to um, the rhinoplasty plano uh, experiment. I think um, you're familiar with that. Is that right? The, uh, yes. Yes. The um, for those that are unfamiliar, I entered a competition, and um, I decided that uh, it was a uh, who could rank the highest after 30 days. And I didn't actually win the official competition. I took fifth, but about two weeks later, my site went to number one. Uh, in maps and number one organic and the the joke the punchline is that I did the site in more Mipsum and got it to rank for the term and it really came down to the idea of giving Google the math that it wants um, you know the, the exact keyword uh, the rhinoplasty plano um, its variations and um, then the contextual terms uh, or the LSI if you will and then what I did is very crassly copied and pasted them pasted them into signal areas you know, your, your H1s, your body content, meta title, et cetera, the amount of times that, that Google wanted to see it, and then that drove the site to number one. On this uh, talking circuit on the last time, I actually then talked about the follow-up to that or the aftermath. Uh, one is Google de-indexed my site, and then Google <laughs> took down 20 of my test sites, which I thought was pretty uncool. Um, but then I realized it was actually kind of fun because it validated everything that I did. You know, if I wasn't exposing how the algorithm was working, I think Google would have rolled their eyes and moved on. But instead, they came after me personally. And um, the joke is that I might be the first person that Google has gone after just for doing good on page. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, then the follow up was not just kind of, I guess, annoying Google a bit, uh, but a lot of SEOs, they ruffled a lot of feathers. Um, and what was interesting to me is everybody saying that you can't do it again. It's not possible to do it again. That was a fluke. You got lucky. And then they would list the reasons that I got lucky. And um, so what I did is I, I spoke in four different cities. And what I did on this talking tour is that I ranked a, a new site in Lorem Ipsum for each of those cities. And um, most of which are on page one. And like the first one was uh, Rental Plastic Garden Grove. Garden Grove is in LA, um, right outside Anaheim where Disneyland is. And uh, that's sitting at number one and number two right now <laughs> for Rental Plastic Garden Grove. <laughs> Well, well, you know what, in, fa in fairness to you, Kyle, I mean, you're doing Google a huge favor identifying these holes. Yeah, but they're not fixing them. <laughs> That's the thing. You know what, actually, though, that goes to, to what I think about SEO is that um, uh, Google is, is so powerful. 
it, it's one of the most amazing things ever created and 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 there's no denying that but you can't give it um godlike qualities you can't even give it human like qualities because it's not human it's an algorithm and the idea is that if you approach it from that way that this is a this is a piece of code you know this is math it's it's very smart math and it, it has abilities to learn but you can't attribute human learning to it you know you have to understand how a computer can learn or how an algorithm can learn and then that's its limitations and if you kind of stay within that then i think you're always going to be ahead of google and it doesn't matter you know as, as i know that this talk is kind of like what's coming up in 2020 but i think if you just stay with the mindset of that it is an algorithm and then what can an algorithm do in 2020 well that's about what google can probably do right wow interesting so well here's here's your here's your chance here kyle you've talked to a lot of people <laughs> on this in these last uh this last worldwide uh you know circumnavigation around the, around the globe and uh i'd love to hear what your perspectives are on uh on the near future sure thing um something that was really funny so the the talk that i gave was especially um highlighting that people talked about that the updates in 2018 and the updates in 2019 and how much google has changed and evolved and gotten bigger and better and the point of the talk was that's not really true you know that's still an algorithm that's that's all that it can be and so while you know there, there might google might have the ability to do certain things that they just sim they simply aren't doing them and i think you could probably do it from a, a cost perspective at a certain point it costs so much money to do um the types of things that they probably do have the computing power to do but because the results in the in the SERPs are so good i don't know why they'd spend the money it's kind of my bigger thought but what was really funny is i'm so uh, in milan which was the final speaking spot um so i just ran through about how <laughs> this stuff still works and then the very first question was well what do you think about bert will this still work anymore and i was like yes you know just because there's a new update it doesn't mean that it has radically changed how any of this works most of the updates um I really think they they affect the 10% on either side of a bell curve or 15%, but but at like 80, 70 to 80% that's in the middle is not going to change very much, if at all, because it can't change. You know, it's it's the core way of how Google works, and, and they're not going to tinker with that because it's quite successful and it's very profitable. Um, it's that stuff on the end that they really try to tinker with, and that's where people are usually trying to game the system anyway. So the people that get, get wrapped up in or get hit by uh, a lot of algorithmic up updates are usually doing something that they probably shouldn't be doing, you know, or they're they're in an area where they could have improved it or they could have done something better and decided not to for whatever reason, and then they get hit. Um, so I think maybe the most controversial thing that I can think about as to what's coming up in 2020 is it's going to stay the same. It's going to be it's going to be about the same. Uh, and if you're staying within that 70 to 80 percent, if you're just doing the things that you're supposed to do, and if you're thinking about it as to satisfy this is what the algorithm wants. Uh, you're going to be just fine. You're not going to have to, you, know, you don't have to worry about it. In our agency, I don't sweat updates. I like updates because usually what happens is, is competitors fall out and we go up because we're not playing in that fringe area where you can, you're, where you're susceptible to volatility. You know, you don't, I don't know why you'd want to be there, to be honest, when you could get steady gains, steady growth, and even impressive growth just by staying within the bounds of, of what we know works and, and what is successful. And then it's also within what Google were really where Google would like you to be. I mean, it's in that it's in that far area where I think you you're looking at trouble, and uh, and also in that far area where you were you side assign abilities to Google that Google really doesn't have, you know, <laughs> because at the end of the day I think it's the algorithm is not going to unless they start manually curating. You know, if they get a million people to manually curate all the results, otherwise it's going to be about the same. Right, right. Well, that's that's refreshing. Um, I I've heard uh you know some uh you know some some uh, uh some 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 uh, directions that could be worry worrisome um um like trying to optimize for voice and what you should be doing to do that and um working with uh schema uh, structured data is uh, certainly beyond me in, in terms of writing writing the code i'm not a code writer um and you know the average guy should, certainly isn't so um it's actually refreshing to hear you say that if you play within the lines you're going to be relatively safe 
Yeah, I, and let me point out though, that playing in, inside the line, it doesn't mean not doing SEO. You know what I mean? Like worrying about your site or thinking about your site isn't doing SEO. And right. I think a lot of people think that that is. <laughs> you know, like they, <laughs> they stressed about their site a lot and, and, the, and then they feel that they did everything and you can't see the quotes that I'm putting up. Um, and then they wonder why they're not ranking. So, I mean, you still have to do SEO. <laughs> you have to be proactive about things. You have to put content up. It does need to be optimized, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But uh, there's no reason to, to, you know what, like with your voice search example, um, I have a Google Home and I use it. I ask it for the weather and I ask it to play songs. You know, I don't know how to monetize either of those things anyway, where like, what's the weather today? And it says it's going to be sunny and nice. Um, I don't know what website was, was going after that. You know, the, the, the stuff that I think it's used for right now currently is, is not monetizable anyway. And you know, I ask it for the time. I guess if you had a time website, maybe then you're a bit in trouble. But otherwise, it's, it's, I'm, you can't ask it like, uh, you know, for all the, the daily searches that you might do for services and products. You know, it, it's not showing you anything. It's just kind of spitting words back at you. And it's not very effective for uh, a lot of e-commerce type things or, or selling a service or a product such that um, people that do that, I don't know that they really need to stress about voice search too much. Right. Agreed. Agreed. That, that makes sense. That makes good sense. Um, any, any, uh, anything else you want to touch on in terms of trending? No, just uh, take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, people want to be like, oh my God, this AI is coming and it's going to be this deep learning, whatever. And I, I don't know. I don't think so. I, it, it costs so much money and the results are so good in Google anyway. I don't, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right on. I, you know, but I mean, I think they've got the technology. I'm sure they've got the technology. I'm sure that's there. It's just, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense to apply it to something that's already working effectively. Right, right. Good. The, well, that's great. The only other thing I would add too is that um, you can't have enough content. You know, when in doubt, write some more content. You know, if anything, like um, when people are really freaking out about the most recent uh, update, BERT, what I think, what I could see from, from my own uh, sites uh, the the evaluation that we did in our agency was that um and, and maybe you're not familiar with this concept but if you optimize for a primary keyword you win secondary keywords even if they're not on the page you can see this in search console how a page will rank for hundreds of th or thousands of keywords many of which don't exist there that's because google has associated those terms with that primary keyword so if you have a page about a, a particular thing and you've optimized for that you win hundreds or thousands of keywords just automatically and obviously over time it's not an instant thing but that as the page grows that that you accumulate all of those secondaries is how it works what it looks like is google maybe got a little more nuanced realizing that a particular secondary especially a long tail one maybe not, was not associated with that primary and shifted it over somewhere else or made it its own primary so really at the end of the day the thing to do is just make more content you know continue to build out an authority site and authority sites have uh, answer a lot of questions about what's going on in, in that particular industry or that service uh, and that's all you need to worry about so i mean the, the, the grand update that is freaking people out is really just, hey, just write some more, put some more pages up. Right. Good, good advice, great advice, which is an excellent segue into talking about tools and particularly the, uh, your page optimizer pro and how that helps you uh, optimize your content. Sure, it, uh, really at the end of the day, it comes down to counting. I mean, the SEO is counting. You need to see the, the secret to ranking is hiding in plain sight. Google shows you the sites that it likes. And it likes those sites because of their on page, their off page, or a combination of the two. And at the end of the day, it's counting the things that Google likes. You know, how many times you've used your keyword in certain places, in certain signal areas, uh, variations of that keyword, contextual terms. You can count those things uh, based on what Google is rewarding. And you can then give Google a page that it really wants to read. That it really wants to index, that it really wants to rank. Um, links too are countable. Obviously, they're you know <laughs> dirty things you can do to hide what you're what you're doing. And I'm not really talking about that, but you can see generally uh, the, the the amount of signals where those signals are coming from. Those are countable things. The only thing about off page is that uh, you know there are a lot of variables. Is Google going to crawl this link? Is it going to like this link? Is it this that or the other? But the thing that you have 100% control over is your own site. And as such, you can give Google the page that it wants to see. 
um, this is actually also the intersection of, of uh, good content versus SEO content because most people when, they, when they're doing a search, that's not the first time they have done that particular search. Uh, if you give Google the page that it wants based on that niche or that keyword, you're probably also giving humans the page they want as well. Uh, you don't want to try to, to teach Google what is a better page, nor do you want to try to teach your, your potential visitors uh, or the users of your site what is a good page. You want to give them the page that they're expecting to see. So by simply looking at what Google is rewarding, uh, you can then satisfy both the algorithm and then also uh, your potential visitors. And what Page Optimizer Pro does is it gives you that information. It goes through the competitors that uh, are winning your particular term, and then it spits back out this is how many times they're using this here and that there, such that then you can then, it gives you the range, if you will, uh, of what looks to be acceptable uh, for that keyword, and, and then you can create that page. And then you can also go through the structure of, of your competitor pages. This is what they're building out. This is what your, what your visitors want to see. And they can provide uh, a functional page that um, will satisfy your, your, your visitors as well. Amazing. So there, there's a, a piece of software that I have a little bit of uh, knowledge of, um, SEO Power Suite. They have a, a website auditor uh, module uh, and they, they go into content analysis. Um, are, are you familiar with that? A little bit. A little uh, bit. In our agency, we use website auditor, but we use like the, um, the structure part of things, looking for like broken links and 404s and, and that sort of thing. So we, okay. I, we do use it in our agency. Okay. Um, so from, in terms of optimizing content, how would you uh, compare uh, SEO Power Suite and their content uh, um, analysis to, um, to uh, Page Optimizer Pro? Uh, I don't want to, I think they do like a TF-IDF score. Is that what they give you? They, they do, that's one of the, uh, one of the uh, modules that they offer, yes. So that's one very small part of what POP does. Um, we do give a, a weighting score for, for variations and LSI and is based off of some TF-IDF principles with the idea of um, uh, this term appears to be more important to the text than say another term. Okay. And, and so that's one part of the analysis, but what POP does is that we will specifically say, do this here, put your exact keyword two times in the body. Now, um, you know, the variations of your keyword. So maybe partial phrases of it or single words, put that four or five times uh, in H2s and H3s, that sort of thing. So it's actually very specific on the recommendations of this is the range that Google wants for this particular term. This is where you need to put it. Very, very, very good. Yeah, that's, that's critical. Wow. Okay, well, I'm definitely gonna check that, uh, that <laughs> tool out. Yeah, if that's awesome. Questions, we have live support too. Okay, <laughs> so fantastic. Hop on over. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, so you also had uh, mentioned a couple of other tools. Um, care to talk about those? Sure. Uh, in our agency, um, we use Quora. I don't know if you're familiar with them, uh, but uh, that's a correlational analysis tool. Pop is not a correlational analysis. We we like to call it like edge analysis, where in our algorithm, what we're doing is we're uh, looking at what your competitors are doing, then we're, we're giving you analysis on how to do better. And sometimes it's, it's parody. Sometimes it's doing a little bit more, but sometimes it's doing a little less as well. And so that's what POP gives you. Quora does correlational analysis. It looks at the top 100 sites on the web, and then it, it uh, uses two different uh, methods, uh, Pearson's and Spearman's, if you're a real math nerd. And then it spits out what, across almost a thousand potential factors, what appears to be moving the needle. Now this is not for the faint of heart. It is a very technical tool. You get a spreadsheet and if you're having trouble sleeping at night, you can just pull one of those out and your eyes glaze, <laughs> no problem. But um, if you can get past that and some learning curve, it's, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, what we do in our agencies, we start with POP because we know the, it's a much smaller factor set. We know that these things move the needle, so that's what we do first. And then we fill in the, the, the gaps or fill in the holes with Quora. Quora, you know, things that POP won't look at or other tools won't look at. You can see like, well, hey, you know, this appears to be moving rank and it's going to take five minutes to do, let's just do it. And so you kind of pick out the low hanging fruit and uh, uh, the things that you might not uh, normally even think about, you know, you'll find some things like, oh, okay, that's interesting. It appears to be moving the needle. Let's do it. And, which is uh, what the, 
which is what the stakeholders want to see anyways, right? They want to see results quickly. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it, it, you can kind of identify things like, you know what, we can do these 10 things right now. It's going to take two days worth of work, but has the potential to, to move the needle, then why not do that? You know, so that's, that's what we do. So we start with pop, we write a page, we get it going, and then we fill in the gaps with Cora on, on what Cora can see, uh, with, with what appears to be moving the needle for that particular keyword. That's kind of our one-two punch for, for, for SEO, or at least for the on-page and technical stuff. Very interesting. Awesome. And any other tools you want to mention? We probably have every other tool. Gotcha. <laughs> but, All um, the... We have, but we use uh, Ahrefs a lot and Majestic, like um, and some Moz too as well. Like we look at, you know, all of those link tools. Look at it from a slightly different perspective, and they all have slightly different um, uh, backlink uh, data databases. So we kind of spread across just to see who's picking up what to try to get a feel. I've been a proponent for a while of using two different backlink tools, and I don't really know that it matters which ones you choose. Just the other ones that you're most comfortable with, but it's good to see two things because every once in a while, one tool will say like, "This site's amazing," <laughs> and then the other tool will be like, "I don't think so," and it allows you then to kind of gauge and compare um, what what two different perspectives are seeing. So, when it comes to off-page stuff, that's how we like to approach it: kind of a two two tool approach for perspective, and then for the on-page and technical, we use obviously our own tool because we're a bit biased, and right. um, and, and Cora. Okay. Um. So earlier on in our interview series, we um, spoke with Michael Cottom, and he, he spoke about uh, negative SEO hmm. and, and the fact that uh, there's some, you know, very um, nasty people out there that can create a lot of damage because they've, they've figured out how to cloak the backlinks so that... Um, like Google, Google bot can read them, but you can't find them with your own tools. Is, is that, is that something that you've found or can you? Negative SEO certainly still exists. And um, like the people that say that Google knows better now, and, and maybe Google's doing a better job with it, but it, it's certainly still something that can definitely harm your site. Um, yeah. And then finding uh, hidden links is, can be near impossible. The thing that helps um, fight off negative SEO in, in a, a lot of cases is building out a larger site. A larger site can absorb um, more negativity. You know, that's why you can fire, you can fire 3 billion horrible backlinks at Yelp and it's not going to drop. You know, it's a massive site. It can absorb toxicity. So the bigger your site is, the less susceptible you are to those types of things. Um, but there are even nastier things than, than that, uh, where you can people can canonical um, very dirty pages <laughs> to your site, and then um, Google might start think start thinking that your site is a porn site or or a, a not so pleasant site, rather than you know <laughs> you know your your mother's recipes on how to make pies, right? You know, it's easy. Those are some really nasty things you can do. But I think one of the biggest things that you can do is um, uh, build out the authority of your site. So make yourself an entity, make yourself a known thing in Google, uh, make yourself real. And then the other thing that I think you can do is, is make your site uh, an authority site, which is, is generally speaking, in, is a larger site, a site that is more comprehensive because the more you have, I think the more that you can withstand. Interesting. Yeah. Good advice. Well, Kyle, wow. That was, that, that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, very fresh perspective. Um, this is going to be a, a great article. Excellent. So um, thank you. Again, thank you so thanks much. for having me. I appreciate hey, it. Hey, thanks so much for being here. And I'll make sure we get those, uh, those uh, links uh, correct because I've got them.